Hi, this is Dan from Akatika and Update My Dynaco. And today we're going to talk about Chapter 2 of what makes transistor and tube amps sound a bit different. Now, I had an old professor, Bernie Widrow, and he used to speak about the way things worked. And I think his favorite expression was that it all works by electricity and magic. Bernie, if I've misattributed that, I'm sorry. But anyway, uh, we'll talk about the electricity part and maybe we'll leave the magic for another day. But the idea is let's compare another way in that the typical tube and transistor amps are different. Last time we spoke, we were talking about the bias current, the way that it tended to be more stable in the typical tube amp than the typical transistor amp. Today, let's look at the difference in the quiescent power drawn by both types of amplifiers. And to do that, let's look at a couple of schematics of a typical tube amp and then a typical transistor amp of about the same rated power. You may recognize this schematic. This is the classic Dynaco Stereo 70. And here we're looking at one channel and concentrating on the output stage that uses a pair of EL34 power tubes. And what we're going to do is calculate the quiescent power, that is, how much power does the output stage take with no signal? Well, one very famous voltage here is that we've got 1.56 volts right there across the resistor that joins the two cathodes. So if we do a little bit of Ohm's law, we see that the current flowing here is going to be 1.56 over 15.6 or 0 0.1 amps. So that current of 0.1 amps turns out that 50 milliamps comes through that tube and 50 milliamps comes through the other tube. So the total power dissipation is going to be 415 volts times 0 0.1 amps or 41.5 watts. So the interesting thing to notice is that this power amplifier is taking, with no signal, not counting the power taken by the filaments, one single channel of this amplifier is taking 41 and a half watts. Let's compare that to a typical transistor amplifier. If we look at this typical kind of transistor amplifier output stage, each device We'll give it the same 50 milliamps of quiescent current that we had in the previously discussed tube amplifier. Let's see what the total power here is in this transistor amp. We've got 25 volts and 50 mils and negative 25 volts and 50 mils. So we've got a total of 50 volts and 50 milliamps. And that comes out to be a power in the quiescent stage of just two and a half watts. Two and a half watts versus 41 and a half watts. And remember, we didn't even count the filament power. So that's a huge difference. And you might ask, why and what is going on? Well, let's look a little further and see if we can figure that out. As an interesting bound on the operating points, let's consider what happens when we're going for a positive swing. And let's say that the way the transistors are being driven, that when this transistor's current goes from 50 to 100 mils, that this one decreases from 50 mils to zero. And at that point, we've got 100 mils here. We've got zero milliamps there. So all of that 100 milliamps appears into the 8 ohm load. And 100 milliamps times 8 ohms is zero. 0.8 volts peak. And now the output power that we get to in that condition where we've doubled this current and driven this current to zero is going to be 0 0.8 peak. And we'll take that and square it. And to get to the RMS power, we'll divide it by two times the output resistance. So we'll just put those numbers into the calculator to make sure I don't make any mistakes. So we'll go 0 0.8 times 0 0.8 divided by 2 divided by 8 equals. So what it says is that particular output power represented by that shift in operating point 
is 0.04 watts. Kind of interesting, that's a fairly low amount of output power where we kind of change the operating mode of both transistors quite dramatically. Let's see how that compares with the tube amp. So just so we're on the same page, recall that this tube originally had 50 milliamps and this had 50 milliamps. And we'll assume that we're going to drive it in such a way that this one has now gone up to 100 milliamps and this tube has gone down to zero milliamps. Same kind of thing. We've doubled the current in one, we've zeroed the current in the other, and we're taking that as kind of a consistent deviation from the quiescent point. And the question is, how much output power do we develop into an 8 ohm load under those conditions? The biggest difference between the transistor and the tube amp is this transformer, as well as that rather big difference in the idle power. Let's show a simulation that we did of the output transformer and its behavior. We've made a SPICE simulation here where we have modeled the output transformer in the tube amplifier. And we've got about an 11 to 1 turns ratio. We see 121 Henrys to 1 Henry, and uh, that's because the inductance is the square of the turns ratio. And there's half the winding, half the winding, and then the output winding. And it turns out if we do the same kind of thing where we take this current from 50 mils up to 100 mils and then down to zero milliamps, that we actually get an output voltage across the load of 8.77 volts peak. And that works out to about 4.8 watts. So let's compare for a second. With this modest shift of the operating current of the output tubes, we've gotten all the way to 4.8 watts of output power. With the same kind of a shift in the transformer, I'm sorry, in the transistor amplifier's output device current, we only get to 0.04 watts. So that's a ratio easily of 0.04 to 4, we'll call it, 120 to 1. 4.8 divided by 0 0.04, 120 to 1. All these numbers might get a bit confusing at this point, but let's see if we can summarize where we are. The tube amp had an idle power dissipation, we'll say idle, of 41.5 watts. The transistor amp had an idle power dissipation of just 2.5 watts. So the tube amp can put out an audio output power of 4.8 watts for that modest change in the operating point of the output devices. By contrast, the transistor amp can only put out 0.04 watts for that same modest change in operating current. We see here why the two of them might sound different in that the distortion of an output stage depends upon how much the operating point changes. And for that same kind of change in the operating current or the output current of those devices in the tube amp, we get about 120 times more output power. It still says we can get very good performance out of both the tube amp and the transistor amp but it does say the way we get that very good performance from the two is rather different. And that might be at the heart of some of the differences in the sounds between tube and transistor amps. So we see from the difference in the power dissipation of the two types of amplifiers that there's definitely a reason why a lot of my customers have summer and winter amplifiers. Of course, their tube amplifiers are their winter amplifiers, and things like my Akatika amplifiers are their summertime amplifiers. And that transistors and tubes, in a lot of ways because of the difference of the output transformer and the way that works, end up in different operating modes with respect to how much output power you get for a given change in the current of the driving devices. And that's yet another one of those things that makes a difference between the two and can lead to different sounding results.
Of course, if good and careful people are designing both, both transistor amps and tube amps can sound pretty darn good. So anyway, that's about it for today, where we've gone through the electricity and left out the magic in tubes versus transistors. And of course, I've done enough of these YouTubes and watched enough YouTubes now that I have to say, make sure to hit the subscribe button and to give me a thumbs up so that more people can join us. We'll see you next time.